all that rosemary. Did we get lost somewhere? Yeah, there was a little glitch there. So she couldn't join the meeting today, and neither could her sister, but the property is now um, in the ownership of just the two um, ladies, the heirs of one side of that Northwest Pacific, Pacific, Northwest Pacific Partnership. Um, and they uh, support the sewer district, and they support the um, public right-of-way. Um, they do need to, and they um, are starting that ball rolling, have to go through the quiet title action because um, well, you all know the history on this uh, long history that we've learned on this these lots, but they are doing that. They have signed the agreement with the sewer district that says they will um, do the quiet title action. So unless there's some, I don't know, maybe if the um, Yellowstone volcano blows up or something, I don't know. Um, <laughs> Pandemic, all right? the history that we've done on this, I don't believe there'll be anybody come forward in the quiet title action, but I guess you never know. Uh, so I, I think that um, Mr. Hart has been aware of the, the agreement that's gone around. Um, I don't think the final one is to his office yet, but um, I think we can support the public right away petition that we submitted almost a year ago. Thank you. Well done, Jean. <laughs> <laughs> Tenacity. <laughs> <laughs> so what? what is our, do we take action today on this or we just kind of wait till the, this is complete? Um, Commissioner Barrow, this is John Hart with the County Attorney's Office. And let, let me just add a little bit to what uh, to what Jean Curtis just mentioned. Um, uh, let, uh, let's take, let's go back a year. So the, the CD Lake Sewer District petitioned the Board of County Commissioners to uh, establish a public right of way on a certain part of what is known as Pine Drive. And part of that property had no known owners. As the petition uh, was evaluated and uh, investigated by the clerk and recorder's office, that's, that's the county department that initially reviews a road petition. It, uh, I believe it was Shira Scott, Sam Scott, who determined who might have a private ownership interest in some of the property on Pine Drive. And it was of uh, daughters of two separate individuals who had subdivided and developed some of this land in this area back, I believe as early as the 1950s or the latest as, as the 1960s. So because of the discovery of uh, people who might have an ownership interest in this property, that's what's taken a year to get to this point. Now those, those daughters um, of, these, of these gentlemen, um, their sisters, two separate sets of sisters, they still don't own the property. They still have to go through a quiet title action uh, in order to, to perfect their ownership in this property. The Missoula County at any time during this process could have declared and established this road without the, the sisters uh, going through this quiet title action. But in the interest of making sure that Missoula County would not have to pay damages, to establish this road, it seemed like it made sense to let a quiet title action play out so that there would be, um, that, you know, there would be bona fide owners of the property who then could come forward and say, yes, Missoula County, we waive all claim to damages for establishing this right of way on this property. Um, I could have made an argument a year ago that that wasn't necessary, but it, this seemed like an appropriate process to go through. 
obviously it's taken a lot longer than anybody wanted it to take and we're still here today not with um, not in a position for two of the sisters who were going to go forward with the quiet title action uh, to actually own the property but what we have and I will forward uh, this email to Emmy so that she can make it part of the record of this hearing. We have an email from uh, Rosemary Harrison and her sister Janet McKee saying we uh, are in full and total support of the establishment of this right of way. And we also have a, an agreement that will eventually be signed by those two those two women and it will be signed by uh, Missoula County and it will be also be signed by the City Lake Sewer District. The, the, the agreement is called Pine Drive Boundary Retracement Survey, Quiet Title and Perpetual Public Road Right of Way and Utility Easement Agreement. And I will also send a, a copy of this agreement to Emmy so she can make it part of this hearing record, even though this document has yet to be signed. But all parties have said that they are going to sign this agreement. And in this agreement, in section 13, um, the heirs, uh, Miss Harrison and Miss McKee, say they expect expressly waive any and all claims for damages against the district and Missoula County related to um, Montana Code Annotated Section 7-14-2607. And that is the provision whereby Missoula County would, if they had not otherwise made that concession, uh, be required to pay lawful damages to a, a property owner for establishing a private right away or public right away on on their property so this that's pretty long-winded explanation of i'm as you as your legal advisor today i am comfortable um, recommending that the board take action on the petition and the action would be whether to grant it and establish a right away on Pine Drive or reject the petition. Those are your two, those, those, those are the two options. But I, I'm comfortable making a recommendation that you take action today on, um, on this, this uh, road petition. And I've said quite a lot, so I'm happy to try to, uh, you know, fill in some some of the some of what I said that didn't make sense or you want you want to know a little bit more about. So you're comfortable, but I mean, what is the harm in waiting until um, as Jean was saying, tell we've got the, the tell they are the the rightful owners and, and going through the quiet process. Make sure making sure that Yellowstone doesn't blow up. <laughs> I'm going to let Jean respond to that. I, I don't. Be, so, because I, I, I mean, I think she's the one that needs to be the proponent for purposes of why she doesn't want the commission to wait any longer and would like the commission to take action today. Right. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Jean Curtis again. Um, I did want to offer up too to remind you that the board, the sewer district board, did agree in that agreement to pay them um, $15,000 for the value of this right of way. So I feel like um, that they're being compensated fairly. That was more than the assessed value uh, done by the appraiser. The reason that um, the sewer district would like you to grant the petition today rather than wait um, there's a couple things. One, Steve Nide has done the retracement survey for you, and part of it is all tied together. Is there's a benefit to the county, of course, to have that road retraced and all these lots um, established. These two orphan lots, lot lot number three, lot number twelve, have not been on the tax rolls ever, so they get added to the tax roll. We have a public right of way on a road that 
people have used years to access their property. So that would then become not only a physical access, but a legal access. But the other is the district, the sewer district, um, needs to have all of these easements in place um, in order to be able to go to bid. And so all of that stuff takes time. So if we know that we have a petition right away, then once they get the quiet title, it's just kind of dominoes, then we can, you know, it all can be filed. But also the county would prefer that these ladies agree to the easement before they record the retracement survey. It's kind of a, you know, everybody getting their, what they need from this. So I, I would um, ask the, the board to, the board of commissioners to grant the right of way petition, knowing that if somebody comes out of the blue, there could be something that happened, but it's very doubtful with all the research that Steve's done on these lots. People have just not known they existed. Great, thank you. Josh, did you have anything? No, I'm good. So okay. so basically, John, what we just need to do is make a motion to grant the right-of-way petition? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, okay. it's that simple. I make that motion to grant this right away petition for the, the longest, I mean, <laughs> my gosh, yeah. <laughs> I think it's the longest wait for the shortest distance. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think you're right. <laughs> so, all right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Go bring that sewer home to us. Hey, <laughs> now I can work so on that again. Thank you. I appreciate it. Oh, Steve me, has something to say. Yeah, let me just throw my two cents in. Um, the survey is done on paper. Um, I have yet to set the pins because there's a statutory requirement that I must file the survey within 90 days of setting those pins. So I've just kind of been waiting so that I don't get in trouble there. Um, but I think at this point I can go ahead and go up there and set the pins and then file the survey and that will give the ladies what they need to go forward with the quiet title action. Great. Thank you. Thanks. Steve, are you in the building or are you at home or some other place? I am in the building. Oh, good. I, I'm going to come ask you a question unrelated to this. Just a survey question. I'll come find you later today. I'm not going to be here too much longer after okay, the meeting. I'll hurry. <laughs> Hurry down. Cool Thank you. All right. Our next hearing is on the St. Lawrence Estate Subdivision, and Matt Heimel will be uh, presenting. Good afternoon, commissioners. This is Matt Heimel with CAPS. So, yeah, today is the scheduled noticed public hearing date for St. Lawrence Estates Minor Subdivision. I'll go ahead and share my screen with the PowerPoint. A moment. Can everybody see this? Yes. Yep. Okay, so um, St. Lawrence Estate Subdivision is a uh, minor subdivision that will result in a total of five lots. Uh, the applicant is Kirk Mace, represented by Dustin Hover with WG, WGM Group Incorporated. Uh, this is a well, just a moment. So this is an aerial image provided by WTM. It's kind of a broad view of the region. Uh, the 78.72 acre subject property is located about five and a half miles uh, northeast of the Milltown area. Those are road miles. And it's south of the Blackfoot River and Cambridge Road. So this aerial image um, is overlain with a lot layout, the proposed lot layout. And the property is unzoned. St. Lawrence Creek runs through the property and the and regarding the growth policy compliance, the Missoula County Regional Land Use Guide from 2002, which was an update to the comprehensive plan from 1975, designates the subject property as suburban residential with a recommended density of two dwelling units per acre. And the proposal does comply with that recommendation. Uh, so the development area is within that designation. Um, areas to the south, the forested sloped areas are designated as open and resource land. Uh, one dwelling unit per, per 40 
acres. And as I said, the development is focused on the suburban residential. Now this image from WGM shows the existing conditions of the property. So the properties developed, there are two uh, single residential uh, dwelling units, and multiple accessory structures, um, about 9.1 acres located on proposed lot five. So the um, upper left hand corner, northwest part of the property. Uh, that's currently an agricultural production area and will not be divided with this proposal. And a portion of the northern quarter of the site is used to graze horses. Uh, there are some existing access points. There are two direct access points on Highway 200 for the existing dwellings that will be abandoned and consolidated. I'll go over the roads in a, in a few slides. And um, there are a couple existing um, access roads that will re remain. One is um, what you see going in the center of the property leading um, on sort of the, the right hand side. And then also the left or west boundary of the property has an existing access road that will also remain. Um, oh, and this is a exhibit showing that 9.1 acre agricultural production area on lot five. So this is one of two images of the preliminary plat uh, showing um, kind of the greater extent of the subdivision. So four of the lots will range in size from one to 1.56 acres. Those are lots one, two, three, and four. And then lot five would be 73.48 acres in area. So the new lots will be utilized for residential single dwelling development um, and will be served by individual wells and septic system. It's possible the, the applicant has, has expressed that there's a possibility lot two will have a duplex, but that all depends on the uh, drain field and sanitary re review for the subdivision. Uh, this is the second preliminary plot image showing some greater detail for lots one, two, three, and four, and the eastern portion of lot five. Uh, so lots two, three, and four in the center will be served by Ledge Rock Drive. That's a proposed private road that provides direct access onto Highway 200 East. Uh, there is a proposed easement for Ledge Rock Drive. That'll be a private easement going westward across St. Lawrence Creek provide access for lot five and um, direct access to highway 200 will be provided for lot one that's in the upper right hand part that would be a consolidated approach so the um, existing approach here if you see my mouse will be abandoned and a new uh, approach will be uh, finalized and have an, an easement so that that is a consolidated area I'm sorry, Matt. This is this is Juanita. Um, sure. My computer's been super slow, so I I can't see okay. your mouse. But my understanding is that it's on the, the kind of the far eastern edge of lot one. Is that where the the road is? That's right. So there's a um, east to west uh, darker gray portion shown, and that mm -hmm. will be the new easement for lot one that connects to an existing access road, and then the north to south access from lot one that goes directly to 200 will be abandoned. I'm sorry. Oh, the so ah, now I see it. It's way over. It's um, it's another. Yep, I got you now. OK, thank you. OK, sure thing. Uh, so there's an area on lot four that's on the um, that's just left of Ledge Rock Drive that will have that has an observed groundwater at seven and a half feet of depth below ground surface. And that will be, that's, that, that is delineated on the preliminary plat as an area of shallow groundwater. So in that area, uh, full depth basements are to be prohibited with a requirement for foundation drain systems. And also just a note on this plat, um, areas of rockfall hazard and 25% slope are also delineated as no build zones on the plat. And for both those items, there are plat notes and we have a flat note condition that just reinforces having those follow through with the with the final plat in the middle. So this is an image from the Riparian Resources Management Plan. Uh, the Riparian Resource Area is contained within the green boundary on the image. Uh, St. Lawrence Creek runs through the center line, and a 50-foot no-build zone will be on either side of the creek. Uh, there's an access easement for future driveway access to lot five provided that would cross uh, perpendicular to St. Lawrence Creek and that will comply with the subdivision regulations. Some other components of the riparian uh, plan include restoration and ab abandoned access, uh, uh, 
excuse me, so restoration of an abandoned access and an abandoned uh, potential structure should must be done in accordance with the weed management and re revegetation plan and uh, plantings and access and uh, new, new vegetation should be in consultation with the Missoula Conservation District. Uh, there's also uh, requirements for the prohibition of livestock grazing and stock access in the resource protection zone. Uh, there is a recommended condition of approval that will require that this information and exhibit be included with the subdivision covenant. This is an exhibit from the application for wildfire hazard risk. And so the subject property is designated as very high for integrated wildfire hazard risk. Uh, so there are several conditions of approval recommended that address fire risk, including um, requirements for class A fire rated roofing materials and requirements for non-flammable siding and deck materials mm -hmm. and a defensible space management agreement. Uh, with regard to public comment, we did receive one public comment letter and this was expressing concerns about uh, farmland preservation, the degradation of water and wildlife habitat quality and uh, access onto Highway 200. And um, it, staff feels that these uh, concerns are adequately addressed with the subdivision either as uh, proposed or conditioned. Uh, for, regarding farmland preservation, uh, the 9.1 acre area of agricultural production is not proposed to be split and there's also a recommended condition of approval that in well two one includes uh, living with wildlife uh, recommendations from fish wildlife and parks and those are included in traffic covenants and another recommended condition of approval um, will have uh, an item in the covenants that recommends that property owners don't have a uh, domestic sheep on on the property and that is to avoid a uh, transfer of disease to the um, wild bighorn sheep and then as to uh, the water quality, uh, there's also the uh, riparian resources plan that we just w went over. And um, regarding safety concerns on the Highway 200, uh, we feel that the consolidated approaches, one for um, lot one that will share a new approach or share approach with an existing access. And then the consolidated approaches onto Ledge Rock Drive should, um, that should uh, address safety concerns. And um, final plat approval will also be contingent on those approaches being approved by the Montana Department of Transportation. So staff recommends approval of the subject of the subdivision subject to conditions. A recommended motion is shown on the screen. Uh, so in general, uh, conditions of approval include requirements related to plat notes, agriculture, repairing and wildlife roads. Uh, roadways, excuse me, uh, fire, fire suppression and provision for utilities. If needed, I can also go over more of those um, conditions of approval. I'd also like to point out this time that um, stating a correction to one of the regulation citations in the conditions of approval. So conditions number 12 and 13 um, have requirements for non-flammable siding and decking materials and class A fire rated roofing materials. Uh, the correct reference should be section 3.1.3.5 for wild hazard area standards. Uh, I went over this item with uh, Dustin Hover yesterday on, on the phone. And also, um, if the proposed subdivision is approved, this correction can be included in the approval letter that gets uh, signed by the Board of County Commissioners. So I'm happy to take um, further questions on the subdivision and go over findings, conclusions, or conditions and the applicant's representative is also available. And I'll um, Thank switch you. the image of the plat. Juan, do you have any questions? I, I did have a quick question. Um, I'm not able to access CFAC's uh, letter of support. Can you just give us a high level? What what were the, the high points? Well, let me, I'll flip over that. So in general, from my memory, CFAC um, endorsed the project. They felt that the uh, preservation of existing agricultural operations was a, was a good layout that they, and they noted that it would not be um, uh, further divided. I'm actually going in my staff report to the uh, finding of fact, so I can touch on any other items that I might have missed. Um, so there, so the CFAC endorsement of the subdivision cited um, several factors, uh, including the 
prime farmland of irrigated soils, the availability of water for crop irrigation, um, the historic and potential agricultural cropland use, potential for timber management, open space and wildlife, and their assessment of the project's impact on agriculture and proposed mitigation plan. Uh, they also cited some some of the projects, uh, some of the steps taken by the owner to mitigate the loss of agricultural land uh, with no stated future plans for development of remaining forested acreage. All right, thank you. Sure thing. Um, is, it, does, is the developer's representative on the phone would, or on the call? Would they like to speak to this? Hi, Josh. This is Jamie Erbacher with WGM Group. Uh, Dustin's also on the phone, but I'm going to lead the quick slides to show presentation that we have. Great. Matt, do you mind if I share my screen? Sure, I'll end mine. Let me know when you're seeing it. I'm seeing it right now. All right, perfect. Um, so I don't have too much to add, but maybe just reiterate a few points that Matt's made. So Kirk has a great vision for this property and intends on providing market rate housing, retaining the use of the ranch um, and clustering the development to impose the least amount of impacts on the property. Uh, with the clustering of the homes on the eastern end of the property, the field on the bottom picture is proposed to remain and is um, going to be retained as part of the 73 acre parcel that makes up lot five. The picture in the upper right hand corner looks at the field heading west and shows the bench where the home on lot five is proposed. Uh, here you can see the area between the existing residence and the original farmhouse. That will be used um, for three additional lots. Lot one is going to be where the house is on the left that you can just see in the corner of the picture. Uh, lot two is just to the right of that. Lot three will be back here uh, in, the, in the far back field. Lot four will be up front near the road. And then lot five is gonna be the 73 acre parcel, which includes all of the um, egg buildings and the original farmhouse. So here you can see the area between the existing residence. Uh, uh, yeah, excuse me. <laughs> this slide provides a view of the best buildable sites. Uh, the steep slopes shown in purple are the unbuildable forested area and the egg land on the bench below lot five is shown in green. Get my cursor here. So this here is the egg land that's um, proposed to remain. Um, the sloped area provides an important role in wildlife movement within the area and the owner understands the importance in retaining the corridor connectivity to the open space north of Highway 200 and will leave this area essentially as is. Uh, the steep slopes, they can be a concern for rock slides and avalanches. However, the tree coverage along with the existing road cut at the base of the hill and the proposed home locations all decrease the chances of a slide or avalanche occurring. So Matt mentioned um, that the growth policy is two dwelling units per acre in the area that we're intending to locate homes. Um, this subdivision does comply with the recommendations and several other key factors of the growth policy, including retaining usable ag land, additional housing opportunities, and preservation of what could, what could be considered a hazardous area. Uh, as Matt mentioned, the Lennoxes provided comment and their concerns include loss of ag land, water quality, wildlife, non-native fish within the pond on lot five and increased traffic. So we've already talked about agriculture. However, I do want to note, and Matt noticed this as well, or noted this as well, that CFAC uh, supports the subdivision request and the design. The Audubon Society noted that the data from the Montana Natural Heritage Program included a variety of wildlife species, though they're not specific to this property. Um, they were pleased to see the steps taken to preserve the riparian resource buffer zone along St. Lawrence Creek, which Matt noted was 50 feet on each side. They also noted that the development is within the Sealy uh, Gold Creek terrestrial focal area and does provide connectivity and habitat to the Canada lynx, bighorn sheep, and grizzly bears. 
Uh, as Matt mentioned, we included a section in the covenants from FWP regarding living with wildlife. And uh, this, including the clustering of the homes, will um, minimally impact the wildlife corridor and the habitat. Uh, with regards to the pond, Kirk does have all of the necessary permits for the pond and the fish that are located in it. Uh, the diversion of St. Lawrence Creek is also permitted and is not proposed to change with this development. Uh, we also note that all water whites will remain with lot five and therefore be severed from lots one through four. With regards to traffic, the amount of traffic expected is minimal and estimated at 19 trips per day. Uh, also, as Matt mentioned, to increase safety, in coordination with MDT, the number of approaches on Highway 200 have been reduced from five down to three. Based on these factors, we um, feel that we have mitigated the concerns of the Lennoxes. <coughs> so the last topic that I'd like to discuss is condition number 12 and our preferred mitigation. Uh, so finding a fact number five under the fire department section on page nine. Uh, states that a condition is proposed that will require a more fire hardened re residence in the form of a class A roof and non flammable siding and decking. So if you consider the wild fire hazard risk assessment map on the screen, I can understand why this would be a requirement. However, the CWPP states that when a mapped, this is at a national scale and not a parcel by parcel scale. Um, the fire hazard assessment was adopted to consider the parcel by parcel scale. And when we look at our rating, we're in the low end of moderate at 43 out of a range of 40 to 59. Uh, the subdivision regulations require that mitigation measures can be included to maintain a moderate or better score according to the fire hazard assessment. Um, this assessment was reviewed and approved by Brent Christofferson at Missoula Rural Fire. As part of the assessment, Brent can make recommendations for conditions and for this development, those recommendations did not include non-flammable siding and deck material. Instead, his recommendations included the need for um, residential fire sprinklers, roadway and driveway width and turnarounds adequate to support a fire apparatus, addressing and class A fire um, roofing material. Um, by the time we incorporate the recommendations and put up a street sign, uh, the rating will actually drop to a 41, which is on the very low, which is very low on the moderate scale and in fact almost off the scale for scoring purposes. So if we consider the fire hazard assessment, which was designed for parcel by parcel review, we are already meeting the regulation um, within the subdivision regulations and feel that requiring um, fire non-flammable um, siding and deck material is um, not necessarily unnecessary, but um, not required by the fire assessment hazard. Um, so we still understand staff's concern and rather than requesting that the condition be completely removed, our preferred mitigation would be a condition that recommends the best construction practices within the WUI and rather than making that a requirement. Um, so I've prepared a condition on the screen for your consideration. And then otherwise outside of that condition, um, we have no concerns and great job to Matt. Um, he's been very helpful throughout this whole process. Jamie. I'm sorry to go back, um, but uh, my I, my audio cut out a bit with um, the concerns about the fish pond. Can you can yep. you tell me how? Yeah, sorry. Can you repeat that again? Uh, so the Lennoxes raised concern about fish in the pond, and they said that they were non-native. Yeah. Okay. And. And how, I'm sorry, and, and how, how is it being addressed? Because the pond's permitted and... Correct. Okay. And so there'll be no interaction with native fish or disease into the Blackfoot or other tributaries and this pond is permitted and uh, sufficient. Yep, correct. Okay. Jamie, I just had a couple of questions too. Sure. Great. 
So um, why not uh, require the non-flammable building materials instead of just recommend? Well, for one, finding non-flammable uh, materials is not easy to do. So there's fire resistant materials, but non-flammable or non-combustible. Sure. You know, so, if you're doing brick, sure, that's... Um, so so then what if we just ratcheted it back to um, fire resistant? Why not require fire resistant? Um, we're considering maintaining a reasonable cost for construction and just knowing that those materials cost more. And by the time you provide a defensible space and a class A fire rated roof, uh, we are maintaining the score within the fire hazard assessment that's required. Okay. Um, other things I just want to say, I really applaud the clustering and design. It's a great way to do it. And uh, wonderful to protect resources. And uh, I had a question about the 73 acre lot five. What's the long term future for that? What do the what do the owners foresee? No proposed um, re subdivision at this point in time. Um, so as far as I'm aware, just leave it as is. There may be some thinning if needed, but otherwise basically just as is with the timber area and continued agricultural use. Right, thanks. And, yeah, and just to add to that for lot five, it's um, that piece of property is really ideal for just like a single home. So the idea with the subdivision was to, you know, create these these four lots for sale, help pay for some of the other property associated with lot five. And there's two additional sections of property further up the mountain um, that are still retained under Kirk's ownership. So it, it's all part of one bigger parcel and um, there's no proposed development at this time. The easement off of Ledge Rock Drive was just provided at this time to allocate that land in the event, you know, a road was desired in the future to access lot five from Ledge Rock Drive. And so we just wanted to preserve that space now with the easement rather than have to go back after homeowners have constructed homes. All right, thanks. Do we have any uh, any uh, public comments on this? All right, um, Juan, do you have anything else? And I just I just wanted to um, understand how staff felt about uh, Jamie's preferred condition. Is this something that folks can live with? I'm the, you mean on the um, I'm the on the building materials or or, or on correct. Things? Okay, yeah. Yeah, I'd love, that's a great question. I'd love to hear that too. What do you think, Matt? Commissioners, Matt Heimel here again with CAPS. Um, our recommendation on that uh, condition of approval was uh, based off of just the, the wildland fire hazard risk being at a, at a very high rating. And if in um, deliberations we see that we don't have a uh, recommendation from our district and if these commissioners are are also comfortable with this. I I don't uh, have a problem as staff. Um, just noting that if we have something in in the covenants uh, recommending that structures be built with non-flammable siding and deck materials, and we come back and have a building permit application in, in the future, um, just remember there won't be any re requirement, of course. And um, as reviewers, it'll it'll be up to the property owner to come up with the um, appropriate um, materials, either uh, just combustible or uh, fire resistant at that point, or choosing to do non-flammable um, materials. But we, we did recommend this this condition, though, ju just for the purpose of public uh, health and safety for the high fire risk. I guess I'm just going to hope if they if they go the cheap route, they pay for that with higher insurance premiums. Commissioners, this is uh, Tim Worley with the CAPS. Um, hey, Tim. I, was, I was basically on the review 
side of um, Matt's staff report. And I think this is a scale issue. Jamie's correct in that as they scored the site, they came up with a moderate hazard level. And I, I think it's actually a, an advantageous site on a number of levels. Our concern is more if you zoom out and look coarse scale, you're in the middle of yeah. a forested area. And our concern is more about an ember storm. Yeah. So um, whether you go with the existing condition or maybe take a step back with fire resistant rather than non flammable, or if you go with Jamie's recommended condition, just to give you perspective, it was more a coarse scale look. And Matt had that slide showing that sea of red. That's our concern right there. It's more the ember storm. Right. Possibly. And I'm looking at like the other properties um, across the river or, or surrounding it. I mean, it is you are in a in a canyon, so I think everyone's concerned about ember storms. But um, I guess I recognizing that this is supposed to be um, cost effective development, and at the scale that that Jamie was explaining, um, I'm comfortable with the. Um, with it being a recommendation as opposed to a requirement. Yeah, I'll, I'm happy to live with it as well, and time will tell. Maybe we'll learn something. Right, and I just hope that, right, that developers are, are well aware of where they are building and recognize the fire hazard. Um, so what would be the proper language then for to, to make this motion accepting the preferred or Jamie's um, let's see here could you bring that up Matt I'm sorry Matt yes I'll uh, I'll go back to my So do I do we need like a parenthetical if um, based on the findings and facts and conclusions of law in the staff report and how, how do we add um, Jamie's preferred conditions appropriately? Could be uh, and subject to the conditions of approval as recommended in the staff report and um, amended uh, per the applicant's request. Okie dokie. I move that the staff, that the St. Lawrence Estate Subdivision be approved based on the findings of fact and conclusions of law in the staff report and subject to the recommendation, recommended conditions of approval on the staff report. And I'm sorry, Matt, say that again. Uh, and amended uh, per the applicant's request. And amended per the applicant's request. Okay. Thank you. Well, and you have to have your lift here. Uh, all in favor? <laughs> Aye. Aye. Did you, did you second that? I, I don't know if we can with just me. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Mr. Hart or Tim? <laughs> Are we? I think you're fine, commissioners. I think, okay. I think you're fine. Josh, you could have seconded that motion, oh. but I think the record's clear that uh, that, that was your intent. Thank you. All right, uh, thanks, Jamie and, and Matt and uh, the other folks that contributed to this. Thank you, commissioners. Thanks, Matt. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thanks, commissioners. Thanks, Matt and Tim. Thank you. Sure thing. Okay, do we have any other business? All right, with that, we are adjourned. Thank you all. Thanks. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye.